During periods of inflation, we need to spend more to get the same things. So just like how inflation erodes our purchasing power, it can do the same thing to our investments. For now, most market watchers think that this bout of rising prices is temporary and that inflation should ease later this year. Once the economy fully reopens, then prices of all these services and products will come down. And at the same time, there's a lot of slack in the labor market. So it's difficult to see us inflation sustaining at a higher level for a longer period of time. Some level of inflation is healthy, as it shows that the global economy is on the road to recovery. Still, there will be short-term negative spillover on investment portfolios. As central banks start to raise rates to address inflation, financial advisors say investors may want to relook their bond exposure. Interest rates have been coming down all the way from, let's say, double digits, high single digits, all the way down to almost zero. So that's been really a, a Goldilocks scenario for bonds because the prices have increased correspondingly. Um, as rates rise, we see pressures, pressure being built onto the bond segment. Fixed interest bonds, which currently yield next to nothing, will suffer the greatest capital losses. The longer the bond tenure, the greater the potential for losses. Analysts expect non-investment grade or high yield bonds to take a bigger hit. They will be the most susceptible to interest rate increment. And usually high inflation also bring along other economic shocks that can cause uh, some of these uh, underlying companies or even countries to suffer economically. And that will cause non-investment grade bonds to go down even lower than those uh, investment grade bonds. But within the high yield space, some do continue to see investment value. If you look at the Asian bonds, they look much more attractive in the current environment because they have lower duration and higher yield. Especially Asian high yield bonds, which are offering more than 7% yield in US dollar, and their duration is less than three years. As for equities, the analysts say inflation isn't necessarily negative for this asset class. It only turns out to be bad once inflation goes above 5% and sustain at those kind of high level. Only in those scenarios, Fed has to hike policy rate aggressively and then equities come under pressure. During inflationary periods, they expect value stocks to do better than growth stocks, which includes big tech. The value sectors and markets, they are expected to do well because we are still in a recovery phase. In a recovery phase, you want to stick with the um, investments, which tends to benefit from economic growth. And those would be European markets, value sectors like financials and materials. Time for growth will come once the economic growth peaks. In that scenario, investors might rotate towards growth stocks because all these value sectors might come, might come under pressure. Value stocks, they say, also tend to have more pricing power and hence are able to raise prices more easily especially for companies who have what we call uh, the ability to price their products um, and to transfer some of this inflation, whether it's cost push, demand push inflation, over to the consumer. So they actually raise the price of the products uh, in order to, to, to push over the inflation over to the consumer side. So I think this come and, and as a result, the revenue of the companies will increase. Besides doing a review of their bond and equities exposure, financial advisors say investors could take some other steps to mitigate the near-term negative impact of inflation. The traditional approach to hedge against inflation is to invest in gold. Gold prices do very well only if you see hyperinflation. But we are not in an environment of hyperinflation. We will see short-term higher inflation, and then it should eventually come down. And the risk for gold prices is that if Fed um, the announces to taper its Q program and eventually high policy rate, gold prices could come under pressure. 
they point out that other commodities like energy, metals, or even agricultural goods are possible inflation hedges too. It has become easier to invest in these commodities nowadays. You can use ETFs to get exposure, right? They have a lot of this kind of thematic or sector-based kind of exposure. I mean that specifically the, the commodity-related ETFs, right? You can get buy an oil and gas ETF, natural resources ETF, uh, raw materials ETF. Physical real estate, the experts say, is another inflation hedge. Uh, REITs tend to move like stocks rather than physical property. So I would think that if you really want to hedge against inflation, uh, buying the physical properties is definitely better than uh, having REITs in your portfolio. Another option, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum, though these do come with their own risks. The limited supply of cryptocurrencies uh, uh, makes it akin to, for example, gold, which has very limited supply. Yeah? The only problem is cryptocurrencies are today in a transition. They are looking for their equilibrium in terms of price. It's really in an adoption stage. Uh, so the price isn't driven so much by what we call normal fundamentals and inflation, but it's driven more by very hard demand and supply issues that got to do with um, um, any commodity, any asset in its transition phase, in its adoption phase. For investors with a longer investment horizon, financial advisors say inflation is noise that they can ignore. The whole idea is to invest in the future and not focus on short-term movements in the market. But within these super trends, we are seeing a lot of focus into climate change, into infrastructure. Thank <laughs> you.